12th lecture on church history. In our last lecture, we learned about Martin Luther and the German Reformation. We will finish up the last part of the German Reformation and move on. Number five, the development of Protestantism. A. On June 25th, 1530, the Augsburg Confession was written. It was drafted by Melanchthon. Carl V convened it with the purpose of discovering the common points between Catholicism and Protestantism and achieving religious unity. There were many each denomination submitted the details of their faith and they found that they were different in some aspects. For this reason, the Augsburg Confession drafted by Melanchthon became a point of compromise. The Protestants were able to use this as the basis for their submission to the Council. However, it was rejected by the Catholics. Then the Catholic Church decided to make Protestant churches illegal. B. In Nuremberg in 1532, Catholics and Protestants signed a treaty of peace. Protestants were granted religious freedom because of the count. This, however, did not mean that each, relig each individual had religious freedom. It meant that if the landlord were a Catholic, then people under him were to be Catholics, and if the landlord were a Protestant, then the people under him were to be Protestants. This means that the religion of the people is the religion of the landlord. Afterwards, Protestantism became more and more powerful. In 1539, even Denmark, Sweden, and Norway joined Protestantism. Zwingli was born in Wild House on January 1st, 1484. When he was 15, he became a pupil of Wolflin. Two years he went to study in Vienna. In 1506, Zwingli pastored in Glarus. In 1516, he pastored in Einsiedeln, Einsiedeln and in 1519, he pastored in Zurich. In 1529, a war erupted between the Catholic Union and the Christian Civil Alliance, a group 
that Zwingli supported in Kappel in October 1531 Zwingli fought against the Catholic Union and he died in battle there number two Zwingli's reform work Zwingli mainly acted in Zurich Zurich was a small city of about 7,000 people. In 1519, he came in Zurich. He released his 67 articles. This was similar to Martin Luther's 95 theses. Wingley Zwingli had discussions about his 67 articles which the council which the city council adopted the 67 articles were adopted because Zurich at the time was a democratic state and a majority was in favor of them if we look at the details, we see that he talks about fundamentally reforming worship. He said, the sovereignty of church government lies with the church. He organized synods where two pastor representatives from each church and eight government representatives participated. A look at his theology. Like Luther, he said, people are saved by faith. He also believed in the authority of the Bible. Furthermore, he supported the idea of universal priesthood. Regarding communion, he believed in its symbolism and its memorialism. Concerning the relationship between church and state, he rejected the idea of temporal power and supported a democratic constitution. Zwingli's Reformation was able to spread and expand throughout Switzerland. Number three, Reformation in the various regions of Switzerland. A. Reformation in Bern. Reform happened on January 26, 1528. Bert and Sebastian Mayer were leaders of the movement. B. Reformation in Basel. Reform happened from February 1525. Johannes Ocolampadius was a key figure of reform. He was a pastor and a university professor. He was a reformer from the same church Zwingli was part of. Number four, the struggle between Protestantism and Catholicism. The struggle happened because five states of the forest region rejected the Reformation and built an alliance with each other. The state of Schwitz accused a pastor of being a heretic and burned him at the stake. 
because of such antagonism, a treaty signed by Protestants and Catholics. First, the first peace of Capel. This is what the first peace of Capel said. The states of the forest regions must pay for the military. The majority vote will select the faith of each state. You will not fight over religious matters. Second, the second peace of Capel. In 1531, the five states of the forest region broke the terms of the peace agreement and 8,000 soldiers attacked Zurich. The Protestant cities fought against them, but they lost the battle. Zwingli died in this battle. Thus, the second peace of Kappel was signed. The second peace of Kappel said, the states would pay for the military. It also said, the five states of the forest region will believe in Roman Catholicism. Number five, Zwingli and Luther meet. This was the time when the first piece and second piece of Kappel were signed. On October 1st, 1529 in Marburg, Zwingli and Luther met. Luther and Zwingli had their differences and concerning government, Luther wanted the, the approval of the Prince of Saxon. On the other hand, Zwingli wanted the reformers of Germany and Switzerland to work together and work with the King of France to have Protestantism officially recognized by Karl V. But the main difference was communion. Zwingli argued for symbolism, while Luther argued for consubstantiation. If we look at the creed of each person, we see that 14 of the 15 points are alike. However, the two had different thoughts on communion. Number 5. John Calvin's Reform Movement Number 1. Calvin's Life Calvin was born on July 10, 1509, in Noyon of Northeast Paris. His father, Gerard Calvin, was an attorney. His mother was a pious person of faith. He was admitted to the University of Paris in August 15. 23. He studied Latin philosophy and the humanity of Paris. When it was about time for him to graduate, he switched to studying law. On November 1st, 1533, the day on which Calvin's friend Nicholas Kopp was inaugurated as rector of the University of Paris, Kopp gave an inaugural address. 
In his speech, Kopp emphasized reformism. This was a problem. It seems as though Calvin wrote the speech for Kopp. As a consequence, Kopp fled to Basel, Switzerland. Calvin escaped to Louis du Dutillet's house in Angoulême. In 1535, in Basel, Calvin published the Institutes of the Christian Religion. In Geneva, while on his way to countered William Farrell, Farrell gave Calvin some advice. He persuaded Calvin to remain in Geneva. Calvin stayed in Geneva and carried on his reform work. In August 1540, he married a widow. On May 27, 1564, Calvin died at the age of 55. His body became very weak from working too much in the busy work of reform. For many years, he ate only one meal a day. He preached every day and held theology lectures three times a week. He also wrote books. He frequently contacted his companions of faith who lived in other countries. Number two. Calvin's Reform Movement in Geneva Prior to reform, Geneva's government was an autonomous one like the other cities of Switzerland. Three councils had taken control of Geneva at the time. They were the Consistory, the Council of 200, and the General Assembly. Now reform had started to take place in Geneva. In 1521, before Calvin arrived, Luther's writings were delivered to Geneva. The spirit of the Reformation filled Geneva and even the regular people agreed to it. But Pharaoh's reform movement succeeded in the nearby city of Bern. This acted as a stimulus for Geneva. This was why the reform movement started. First, prohibited mass. They improved customs and strictly kept the law. Let us take a closer look at Farrell and Calvin's Genevan Reformation. The citizens acted out against Calvin when he initiated the Reformation, and the council decided to banish Farrell and Calvin. For three years, the banished Farrell and Calvin wrote Bible commentaries. In 1541, when a new school seized power, Calvin and Farrell were invited back. They lived there for 23 years and focused on the Reformation. 
Number three, Calvin's reform work. In his heart, Calvin to create theocracy in which the government and church are one. A. He established church law. He said, the state should not interfere with church government. He categorized church positions into three groups, pastors, elders, and deacons. Furthermore, all citizens were church members. They all had to make a confession of faith. B. He organized the consistory. The consistory consisted of five pastors and twelve elders. They made sure people kept customs and morals and they gathered once a week. Calvin was a pastor member, but he was given the special position of interpreting the Bible, had the right to banish someone who had done wrong from the church. Because this was true, 58 people were executed and 76 people were banished from 1542 to 1546. In order to revive business, he promoted the silk industry. D. He established a university for the education of citizens. Number four, Calvin's writings. Calvin wrote the Institutes of the Christian Religion. He also wrote commentaries on the Old and New Testaments. He wrote a catechism and he left behind his sermons and letters. He also wrote a commentary on Seneca's. Let us take a look at Calvin's The Institutes of the Christian Religion. The Institutes of the Christian Religion was organized in four books and 80 chapters in according to the order of the Apostles' Creed. The first book focuses on the doctrine of God. Here he talks about the knowledge about the Creator God and the knowledge about us human beings. In the second book, he writes about the doctrine of humanity and sin and about Christology. In the third book, he writes about pneumatology and eschatology. He talks about the work of the Holy Spirit that gives in Christ. The fourth book is about ecclesiology and theory of the state. Here he writes about what the measure of grace is and how the state and government should be established. 
Number five, Calvin's theological ideas. Calvin said that God's absolute sovereignty and providence are the basis for theology. He argued for spiritual presence in communion. He spoke of the five points of Calvinism. They are total depravity, unconditional election, limited atonement, irresistible grace, and the perseverance of saints. Next, Evans views the Bible. He put the Bible's authority above the authority of the church. He believed in verbal inspiration. He believed in the unity of the Old and New Testaments. He also did not acknowledge pseudepigrapha or apocrypha. In other words, he did not acknowledge any revelation other than the 66 books of the Bible. Furthermore, he said that the Holy Spirit preserves the Bible. Next is Calvin's views on the church. Calvin saw the church as being divided into two, the visible church and the invisible church. The visible church is the church seen with our eyes. It is with an ex external organization and government. Hypocrites can be included in the visible church. Next is the invisible church. The invisible church is the church known only by God but unknown to us. The invisible church is the true church that only includes the members of Christ. Number six, Calvin's ideological influence on Europe. A. His influence on England. In England, the Puritans removed all Catholic rituals and superstitious elements. Calvin's ideas influenced the Puritan faith. As a result, famous Puritans such as Hooper, Humphrey, Tin emerged. B. His influence on Scotland. Patrick Hamilton and G. Wishart started the reform movement in Scotland. John Knox was a key reformer in Scotland. He founded the Presbyterian Church. C. His influence on France. The Huguenots were active in France. The Huguenots were Calvinists in France. They were massacred on St. Bartholomew's Day in 1572. In 1598, Henry IV issued the Edict of Nantes. 
the Huguenots were granted freedom. Number seven, the cause of the development of Calvin's theological ideas fulfilled theological unity. When establishing theology, Luther said, by faith we are saved, but he lacked theological unity. Calvin, on the other hand, had the same theological ideas from start to finish. Calvin's theology is clearly shown in church government. His church government was conveniently applicable to different nations of the world. His ideas put an emphasis on training people to live as Christians, and this saw a big actual effect. His ideas were widely accepted by the Anabaptists, Lutherans, and Zwinglians. Calvin also appointed an excellent successor. Sir Theodore Beza propagated Calvin's ideas. Number eight, Calvin's opponents. Number one, the spiritualists. They believed in liberal ideas. They were pantheistic mystics. Number two, the political liberals. Number three, Castelio. Castelio did not believe in the authority of the Bible and criticized the canonicity of some parts of the Bible. Consequently, he lost his position and was driven out to Basil. Number four, Bolsek. Bolsek denied Calvin's idea of predestination. Number five, Michael Servetus. Michael was a lib radical liberal thinker from Spain. He said that the doctrine of the Trinity is wrong. Because of the book he had written, he was to be killed when caught, but he ran away to Geneva. He was captured in Geneva and was sentenced to prison. The Council of Geneva advised him to change his mind, but he refused to do so. He was eventually condemned for heresy and burned at the stake. Some people blamed Calvin for the death of Servetus, calling him a bad person. However, if the Catholics had caught Servetus, then he probably would have received the same sentence. Number six, the Reformers' theology. Number one, Luther's theology was Christ-centered theology. His fundamental doctrine is salvation by faith. Regarding communion, 
he believed in consubstantiation. Luther believed the church should submit to the state. Number two, Zwingli's theology was theology centered on the will of God. His fundamental doctrine was salvation by faith. However, concerning communion, he believed in symbolism. Concerning the state, he advocated a democratic constitution and rejected the idea of temporal power. Number three, Calvin's theology was ology sovereignty of the absolute God. He believed in the spiritual presence view of communion. Regarding the relationship between the state and the church, Calvin thought the state and church should be separated. Number seven, the Anabaptists. Number one, the origins of the Anabaptists. Even before the Reformation, the Anabaptists existed in Germany, the Netherlands, and Italy, among other places, as small groups with a Reformed faith. Their objective was to restore the Church to the state of the early church. The word Anabaptist comes the only accepted adult baptism and not infant baptism. They disapproved of the medieval church's organization, rituals, and sacraments. They said worship should be held in the people's national language, and they were devoted to prayer. Number two, their organization. The council convened in Augsburg in 1527, organized the Anabaptist Church. The church government had pastors, elders, and deacons. Key Anabaptists are Balthazar Hubmeier and Hans Denk. Number three, their faith. They imitate the faith of the early church. They had rituals of faith, and when they gave their confession of faith, they said baptism has a significant meaning. For this reason, they rejected infant baptism. The Anabaptists practiced non-resistance. They were opposed to state control and paying taxes. They rejected the idea of predestination and claim that one receives salvation by his own power. 
they said people must obey Christ's Sermon on the Mount exactly as the words say. They kept worship simple. Number four, the results. Their ideas, because of opposition from Roman Catholics, Lutherans, and Calvinists, Anabaptists were greatly persecuted. The shape of today's Baptist denomination comes from the Anabaptists. This concludes the 12th lecture on church history. Thank you.